This is Looking Backward by Edward Bellamy. It was published in 1888 and was one of the most popular books in America in the 19th century. In the book, a man named Julian West falls asleep and wakes up over 100 years later in the year 2000. He finds himself in a futuristic socialist society where industries are nationalized and workers retire at 45. The book had a significant impact on American thinking at the time. Across the country, 165 Bellamy clubs formed to promote its ideas. So what would happen if Julian West woke up in the 21st century as we know it? America will never be a socialist country. When I talk about democratic socialism. Socialism is not the answer. West wouldn't be waking up to a socialist utopia, but he would find an America that's had a long and complicated history with socialism. She's looking at herself on television. It ain't Bernie, it is you, it must be you. The definition of socialism can really depend on who you ask. The dictionary will tell you that socialism is a political and economic theory of social organization which advocates that the means of production, distribution, and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole. To many voters today, socialism means expanding social safety nets like universal health care. We asked Morris Isserman, an expert on American socialism, to provide us with some context. For some Americans, uh, especially those of a certain age who remember the Cold War, socialism represents a totalitarian uh, dictatorship where the state controls all of the, what Marxists would call the means of production. Socialism in much of the rest of the world is understood as a, a system that um, seeks to maximize uh, benefits for all people. Some of the first attempts at collective ownership in America were utopian settlements that sprung up across the country throughout the 19th century. One of the most famous of these was New Harmony, Indiana, formed by social reformer Robert Owen in 1825. In New Harmony, labor was divided and equality was prioritized. And like many of the utopian settlements of the time, it was founded as a place where bright minds could pursue their studies without interference from capitalist life. But New Harmony was, in large part, a failure, with infighting over governance and religion leading to its collapse. After just four years, the community had split apart, and Owen lost most of his money. Despite limited success, communities like this laid the groundwork for socialism to develop politically in America. As capitalism in America picked up steam, socialism as a political force took shape. Many industrial laborers grew unhappy with the status quo, while the country's owning class just grew richer. People in their own lives had seen enormous transformation going on in the economy, and they didn't take it just as, well, that's the way it is. They still thought of society as something that was evolving. Workers around the country began to protest, and one of the largest actions was the Pullman Railroad strike outside of Chicago. The strike resulted in the disruption of Midwestern rail lines and a violent face-off between strikers and federal troops. As the strike came to a close, its leaders were arrested, including this man, Eugene B. Debs. While in jail, Debs became a socialist. And in 1900, a number of disparate socialist groups in the United States united and formed what became the Socialist Party of the United States. Debs became the Socialist Party's go-to presidential candidate, running five times between 1900 and 1920. And in 1912, he won a million votes, 6% of the total. That's the most a socialist candidate has ever won in an American presidential election. And he wasn't alone. During that period, socialists had managed to elect more than 1,000 officials nationwide, including two members to Congress. But this golden era for socialists didn't last long, as a range of forces from anti-immigration sentiment to looming world war made them a target of attacks. Eugene Debs was arrested again in 1918, this time for violating the Espionage Act, a newly enacted law that made it illegal to speak out against U.S. involvement in World War I. His arrest was part of a wider government crackdown against socialists. Following Russia's Bolshevik Revolution, the U.S. government and many of its citizens feared that radical groups intended to challenge America's democratic values or even overthrow the government. At the same time, the composition of the American left was changing. 
communism, which was more focused on revolution than socialism was, became popular among American leftists, somewhat displacing socialism as a popular ideology. An organization that on the eve of the First World War um, was capable of gaining 6% of the vote, a million votes, and had 100,000 members, was reduced to a um, skeleton of itself by uh, the early 1920s. When Democratic President Franklin Delano Roosevelt introduced New Deal reforms such as Social Security and unemployment insurance in the 1930s, his opponents said he was carrying out a socialist agenda. But for American socialists, like party leader Norman Thomas, the New Deal was actually seen as a blow to their mission. Norman Thomas cracked that, yeah, he's carrying out the socialist platform uh, on a stretcher uh, because, you know, he's basically killed socialism by taking some of the more appealing of its reform proposals and leaving no room for a, a, a socialist party. This tension between socialists and Democrats continued to hurt socialist power politically for the next several decades. During the Cold War, socialism's reputation in America was further damaged by its perceived association with communism, which had been represented by totalitarian regimes abroad. In 1962, socialist writer Michael Harrington gained notoriety for publishing The Other America, a book that argued that 25% of the country lived in poverty. Some believe it partially inspired the government's war on poverty programs. Harrington went on to become a pivotal figure in the socialist movement. Harrington said, let's work within the Democratic Party to push through a, a progressive agenda. And his phrase was, we should be the left wing of the possible. So in 1982, he founded the Democratic Socialist of America, or the DSA, whose candidates ran for office not as socialist, but as Democrats. The DSA remained relatively small for the rest of the 20th century. Now it's official, we are in a recession. In 2008, America was hit by the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression, and it disproportionately affected the middle and working classes. A few years later, the Occupy movement formed in reaction to growing inequality. But without specific demands, it didn't have much tangible impact. It's like the bee who stings and then dies. So Occupy died, but the sting remained. In the 2016 presidential campaign, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders emerged as a popular candidate for the Democratic Party. Of America. Sanders had been inspired by the work of Eugene Debs, and he had even made a documentary about him in 1979. He wasn't a member of the DSA, but he did call himself a Democratic Socialist, the only socialist on the Democratic stage. Sanders lost the Democratic nomination, but like the Occupy movement, his impact remained. Two years later, the DSA rose to greater prominence when member Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez became the youngest woman ever elected to Congress and an overnight political celebrity. On top of her win, DSA candidates won dozens of local and state elections across the country, and membership rose from 6,000 in 2015 to 50,000 in 2018. That said, DSA members still represented a very small number of American voters. It reflects uh, important demographic changes, an important shift in political values and beliefs, uh, especially on the part of younger Americans. According to Gallup polling, young Americans' views of capitalism have soured over the last decade. In 2019, they viewed socialism almost as positively as they did capitalism. And with the presidential election looming, this could signal a significant shift in America's politics. Republicans have continued to use socialist as an insult. Let the Democrats be the party of socialism. Hitler was a socialist. And Democrats have debated if and how socialism fits into their agenda. I'm a capitalist. Come on. When I talk about democratic socialism, what I talk about are human rights. Will socialism continue to remain on the fringe in America as it has for over a century? Or will society start to look more like the fictional one Julian West found in Looking Backward?